So story time. Uh, you know, I've had a lot of stuff going on and there've been a lot of just craziness. I just keep looking out the window there because the biggest craziness was literally the maple tree outside of our house got struck by lightning while we were up on the roof and we were trying to batten down the hatches for an unexpected storm that came and then lightning struck the tree and the tree, it fell on the pow. That's not the story that I'm telling today. The story that I'm telling today is uh, different of the different variety and it's shop related. You know, so in addition to all of the weirdness that's been going on, just kind of one thing after another, right? Some of you may know that I go to the shop very, very early in the morning. Early in the morning is when it's my time and I get to reset my brain and make my soap and it's quiet. Well, it's not quiet because I'm listening to an audiobook or something in my ear while also listening to a radio, you know, being played really loud and all the things. But it's quiet. That's all it is for me. So I love going to the shop at really, really early in the morning, like four o'clock. And uh, one day I was at the shop at four o'clock in the morning and I had pulled up to the shop and opened up the back hatch to grab something out, went over, unlocked the shop, put the thing in and was coming back. So this is like a total of maybe 45 seconds that I'm away from my car. Okay. In that amount of time, as I'm rounding the corner, there are bright lights in my in my eyeballs right so there's headlights and i'm getting kind of nervous at this point because it it's most likely a cop but it could be somebody that's like here to do bad things you know and so i kind of walk up like i just keep walking and i raise my hand and i'm like hello and somebody says hello and i'm like are you law enforcement and they're like yes i am and so it was a cop and so it was you know a, a whole thing and at that moment i was like oh no buddy this is not great for me because you know how like when you're following a trial or whatever, they release dash cam footage and stuff. I realized at that moment that maybe this cop had a dash cam on recording for whatever reason he was there in the 45 seconds that it took me to get from my car to the shop and back again. And I started going, oh no, this is bad. Because when I tell you that I go to the shop at four o'clock in the morning, I don't go looking like this, okay? I'm not normal. I, I don't look normal. I look like the beginning, like the before of Chris Rock's skit about how women always lie, right? I it mean, it's tragic. I'm usually dressed in a sweatsuit. And by sweatsuit, I don't mean like a pair of joggers and a sweatshirt, right? I mean like old school sweatsuits, like, you know, the wrestlers would pull on to go for a run if they need to drop weight right away. And so just very interesting stuff going on you know and so that's always fun i'm usually always wearing my frownies i don't know if you know what frownies are they're basically just pieces of tape that you just kind of stick to your face all over the place to sleep in you know because the things that we do for beauty or whatever and uh if i'm not in my frownies and i've already taken those off before i've left the house i usually have a mask of some sort on and since my favorite uh mask is activated charcoal i usually look like that like I just go to the shop like that and then I, you know, wash it off when I'm at the shop because, you know, there are sinks there too. Luckily that day, none of those things were the case and I was just very barefaced and wearing all black, right? So luckily that didn't happen. But this cop, he was real suspicious. He's like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, I work here. I have a shop here. I'm working. And he's like, it's kind of early. And I'm like, yeah, I know it's early. And keep in mind, I do this every day. Like every day I have a very bright blue car at my shop that early in the morning, you know? And again, what kind of person would just be like stealing things in a bright blue car? I don't, anyway, he was getting really, really weird. And he's asking me all these questions and everything. And I'm like, okay, God, are you really about to like do the thing? Are you going to arrest me? All the thing. It was a moment. It was a crazy time. And you know what? That actually does have something to do with this video and what we are making today because I made this soap right after the cop, thankfully, let me go. And I will tell you more about this soap and why we're making it and all the jazz in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. <laughs>
How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for the making of the bro code, soapy things. And we are going to talk about custom bars on your website. So this is going to be primarily for the people who have websites and do all the things. So not necessarily the people that just do the soapy things for a hobby, but it's fun if you want, because you can watch my pour, because it's a butterfly swirl or a variation of it that I've made for like a decade at this point. And the bro code itself used to be on my, on my website as a complete line. And I decided, well, I don't know, about four years or so ago that I didn't like doing that anymore because as every, every time that I made something and put it on the website, I was just keeping it, right? And as a result, I had like 300 products to keep up with and to also keep stock of on my website at all times. And I don't like doing that because I really like changing everything out from season to season. And so as a compromise, I decided to keep my main four for my men's line, my main four for my women's line, my beer and my wine soap. So I have basically 20 soaps that exist there all of the time. And then every month, there's like eight more soaps that you can choose from. So it's cool. It keeps it all, you know, just very new and fresh and you never know what's going to be there, all the jazz. But as a compromise to the people who loved the, the bro code or any of the other soaps, I did a custom option on the website. And so you can buy it at a discounted price. If you get the whole loaf, I can make it at that point and then, you know, ship it out in a couple of weeks when it's ready to ship. And so I want to talk about whether or not that's a good thing that you should include within your line or again, the soapers that actually sell. And so that's what we are going to do while we make the bro code today. And uh, yeah, hopefully I don't mess this one up, but let's get to the video and the making and we can see if I do. So the making of the bro code. The bro code is a soap that is a spearmint and eucalyptus blend as far as the smellums go. And it has an exfoliant in it. Usually it is a jojoba bead exfoliant. But for this particular one, I am going to actually use some jojoba beads, yes, but also a little bit of pumice because the customer that requested this had said that they wanted it to be scratchier than the last batch of soap that they got. And I love this customer. This has been a person that orders from me that I've had, well, in the shop and all the things for oh my gosh like i don't know six or seven years and it's always nice to see their order come in and they were one of the ones that really was not very you know happy about me getting rid of the bro code in totality and so when they saw it at my shop and saw that it was going to be done donezo we this is actually one of the reasons why i'm like you know what i can probably just do this you know and just go ahead and make these custom batches and just have them available on the site and so that was one of the reasons why this was all born. So the um, pour itself, this is a modified butterfly swirl. Now a butterfly swirl is when you take the bulk of your soap batter, so about 70 to 80% of it, and it's one color. And then you have like three alternating colors. You can do more if you would like, but three to make it really pop that you are going to lay into the soap mold on one side, just do lines of it on one side, alternating between the colors and or the base color itself and trying to get it all the way down to the bottom of the actual mold. And then taking, once you have the bulk of the soap in, taking a hanger to it and giving it some stirry stirs, well, some swirls. And we will talk more about that when we get to that point, of course. But I wanted to give you an overall idea of what a butterfly swirl is and what you can expect of it, uh, you know, now while I was talking about it. And my per this particular soap, it's always had a butterfly swirl in it, but I never really wanted it to look exactly like a butterfly swirl. When it was time to design this soap, the bro code, it was I, I was in the mood to make a butterfly swirl. I thought it would be really cute and fun. But then I realized that this is supposed to be going into my men's line. And I had this big copy on the website about 
the bro code and from how I met your mother, you know, and I wanted to make sure that it didn't look too, I guess, feminine. Nowadays, those words don't really mean a whole lot, you know, but this was a decade ago when we were still just doing kind of like men's lines, women's lines, all the things. And now it's much better, I think, generally just to have a gender neutral section in your website. Everything's gender neutral and you can just label them as florals or not. And, you know, people can make their own decisions because, you know, times they are changing and that's cool. So we're going to be putting all of the... Uh, jojoba beads in here as well as some pumice to make sure that it's nice and scratchy before we move on to the pour and uh yeah we can talk more about wholesale accounts and i don't know well not wholesale accounts what am i even saying i guess you could do this for a wholesale account it's basically the same concept which is why i knew that this would be a completely fine thing to do on my website because i i have those wholesale account things you know where you buy in bulk and you get a discount and so, yeah, that's kind of how these custom orders, these bulk loafs were born. So let's go on to the pour and we can talk more about, of course, the pour itself, but also the pricing and the options for doing this, perhaps on your website, if you wanted to, you know, just some ideas. Okay, now on to the pour, and I'm going to put about half of the batter into the mold now and then just set the rest aside for the base color while I lay down my layers. Now, for all these lines, you wanted to have uh, probably a thin to a medium trace, as far as trace goes, of your batter for these lines for two reasons. If it's too thin, all these colors are just going to kind of muddy together and you're not going to be able to pull them into your main base color. And the second reason is if it ends up overly thick, they're not going to have really nice, cool, defined swirls for the butterfly swirl. Now, I tend to lay probably three or four passes of each of the colors down just until I'm happy with it, trying to keep them right over the top of each other, really not allowing that colored portion to extend much farther than exactly what it is right now. So about an inch of the total width of the bar of the mold there. If that does happen, I will go to the other side of the mold and put in more of the base color to make sure that everything kind of stays over to the side because that's where your butterfly is really going to start. And then when you are done and you have everything ready to go and you're happy with the amount of colors that you have laid down, you are then going to take your hanger. You're going to take it all the way to the bottom. If you are, if the colored side is on your side, so it's closest to you, you're going to take the hanger all the way to the bottom. And then you are going to start making swirls toward yourself as you raise the hanger just a little bit at a time while you're making circular motions. So you're gonna be raising it in height as well as extending it away from you with each swoop until you get to the top of the mold, which you will then be on the opposite side of the mold at the top. And with this particular swirl, I tend to do it a little bit different because I do my little swirls, you can see there with the circles and I, then work it back in and then I take it again and I kind of just cut it right in the middle and do that because this batter is a little bit thinner than I would have liked overall for the pour. So I wanted to give it a little bit of a chance for it to extend further into the base of the bar. Do you have to do that? No. Do you, do, can you? Yeah, totally. Just remember that the more that you work your batter, the more likely you are to end up with, you know, some muddy colors. So just keep that in mind. Now with this particular cut, one of the cool things about it is that it creates matches. And so I will show you the matches in all of this, kind of like a lotus. You can definitely put them together and go, oh, wow, cool. Of course, that's a butterfly. But on its own, it just looks like an interesting bar of soap, which is really what I wanted to go for with this because I didn't want it to be, again, too butterfly-esque, if that makes sense. But anyway... I'm going to do some cute things to the top with all of this. I usually just take them and do stripes and, you know, make a, just skewer the top, cute little 
mantra, it figure eights over and over again, you know, just on the top portion to get all the colors together and show that they're all represented inside as well and kind of go from there. But for the uh, bulk soaps, of course, I'm going to get inter interrupted again by a freaking info card coming up, but we can talk a little bit about it now. The bulk soaps on my site, I, if you think about it, I've already done all the work, right, for this particular soap, which was a mainstay in my line for a long time. So I already had the, the photography. I already had the descriptions. I already had the weight. I already had all that information there. And so it was very easy for me to just take it to a drop down listing on my website and say, well, this is something that you can purchase. Now, for my purposes, I ended up charging $60 per loaf. And so what that gets you is 11 bars and two cutoffs or 12 full bars, if I like my cuts, of one soap. Now, a lot of people might not like it, you know, if you have this listing and they're not getting it within that 72 hour shipping or whatever you have on your website. In this, I have I've listed multiple times within the listing that this is a special order. It's a custom order. They're made to suit and that they will ship. I think it's two to three weeks at this point, but I have changed it up. It's been anywhere from one to two to three to four weeks after the actual purchase. So the customer knows what they are getting into. And if they don't, you can point them to the listing that they agreed to, you know, when they bought it. Now, that said, I have never actually had any problems whatsoever with anyone buying the custom molds or the custom loafs. So it seems like they're all actually reading it, you know, which is good. And so I haven't had anybody come back to me and be like, hey, where's my soap? I ordered it like two weeks ago. And I'm like, yeah, right. It ships today because I had to make it on that day. And it has to be soft enough, or I'm sorry, firm enough to, oh, that's fun on the one side there. That's very cool. It looks like a watercolor painting, but it has to be firm enough in order for me to ship it because I don't want them to end up with smooshed bars when it's all said and done. So that's why I have played around with the timing. W as we get closer to the super busy season with the holidays, because I have wholesale orders going on that need all of their holiday soaps, but also I need to be making all of my holiday line and all of the jazz. I usually do extend it to the full three to four weeks just to give myself a little bit of buffer between order and shipping. But the one to two week mark actually is pretty, pretty doable. It's manageable under regular circumstances. So if you don't have a huge back order of soaps that you're, of orders that you're working on or whatever, if you see that a custom loaf has come in, totally just go make it and have it curing as close to your dehumidifier as you possibly can. And then it'll be within one to two weeks firm enough to ship out. And I always leave a note or a little card or whatever in my custom bars, unless it's somebody who's bought from me a whole bunch, in which case I don't just keep sending the same card over and over again. You know what I mean? To let them know the soap is totally safe to use, but the longer it cures and loses its water weight, the longer the bar will last. And so I usually recommend in the, the note that I write or in the little info card that I send to use the end pieces if they just can't wait and put the rest of them in a cool, dry place, unwrapped all of the jazz so they can finish their curing and that has worked very well also I have a ton of customers that ended up really liking this option and so instead of buying you know a whole bunch of different types of soaps they found one that they really love they like the scent they like the performance and they will just continue to order you know this one loaf at a time and you know every quarter or so I get another order from them for the exact same thing and that totally works now if you wanted to work with the if you wanted to look at like what would be the most popular soaps perhaps in your line and you wanted to sort of expect that and have a bunch of extras made you can totally do that but at that case at that point it's kind of defeating the purpose of not having to manage extra inventory and so i really do and have preferred look that's cute looks kind of like a frog or something but yeah i have preferred doing this just as a um, as a made to suit. And so I keep extras on hand for certain soaps that I know I'm going to be putting into my line at a point. So for like example, my love is love bar in June, that is also available year round. 
as a custom loaf. But since I know that I'm going to be having it like actually on the website in June, I always have around 300 of those in stock and available anyway. And so those ones can get shipped out really quickly. That is such a pretty, that one's, that one's my favorite, I think. What do we think? I really like that one. That one's very gorgeous. That one might end up being my thumbnail. But yeah, as you can see, when you put them together, you have a, a pattern. And so it's, you know, the one bar cut off of the previous bar and then the bar after it. So you can get the pattern going. Sometimes it's complicated to get the pattern. And so I've learned to just cut everything and keep them the exact same way for when I pull them out. That one's cool too. That one's very interesting. But yeah, very, very cool swirls. Definitely has a nice impact. It's very stunning, visually appealing. Looks like the Seahawks. I have had these soaps actually look like the Seahawks before with the bro code, which bothers me because I'm not a Seahawks fan. I'm from Colorado. I'm not allowed to be a Seahawks fan, but it's really fun. Getting to play with these designs every time I get a custom order for them is awesome because ultimately it gets me really good at doing the swirly swirl things with a hanger. And there's nothing wrong with that. Now you can use a thicker hanger so you can put like a like a straw or something on your actual hanger tool if you're just using a literal hanger or get like a, a tie, like a cable tie or something, which are thicker. And you will end up with more defined, like cooler swirls between because you're using a thicker thing to pull through if you want it. But for me, I have had zero problems with my old trusty wire hanger forever. That's the same wire hanger that you've seen since the beginning of this channel. Yeah, that's weird with those two little white spots there. But yeah, same wire hanger that you've seen since the beginning of this channel, same wire hanger that I've used since the beginning of my soap business. And it works just fine. But there are other options too, also as well. But anyway, there's some chit chat about wholesale stuff or you know bulk order stuff. You should do it, it's a good time. And a really beautiful bro code that's going to its owner. I mean, it's there by now, you get it. I mean, of course I didn't mess it up. I've been making this, as I said, for like a decade. So it's cool how every single bro code ends up being a little bit different. I do like playing with it. That would be the biggest thing that I love about getting to do the custom bars or whatever with the bulk buy, because I do get to play with the design a little bit every time. And it really improves my skills as a soap maker, especially as a soap maker that, as you know, I don't really like uh, spending a lot of time on getting good at pores. So eventually, you know, I get good at a design as a result of having to do this over and over. So it's really cool for the end user. I mean, yeah, 50 bucks for 12 soaps. That's amazing. You know, that's deals. And so as long as they are all fine with the print and they all are, you know, then, and they realize they're not getting their soaps for a couple weeks, it's a win-win for everybody. So ultimately, yeah, if you are struggling with having too much inventory to keep track of, I do recommend doing a custom option on your website and you can just have a drop down box. You know what I mean? Of all the different types that you have available, you already have the picture taken if you've put it on your website before, et cetera and so forth, and just put that into that listing. And when somebody wants it, make sure your everything looks good. We've talked about it and you can go that route. I think it's a cool thing. My customers have really loved it. I would say that out of every like, you know, day's orders, I would say that probably 40% of them are custom bars or custom whole loaves. So there's that. Keep that in mind for sure. You could go check out soapandclay.com to see how I do it. If you need some inspiration, all the jazz, you can check out soapandclay.com if you want to order your own soaps. That's available too. Absolutely. I hope you guys had fun with this. I always have fun with you. I am going to go and uh, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow for sure. Like I'm actually going to be back tomorrow. That's a whole thing. That's really happening because I'm not leaving this chair until I have all of the face videos done because the aforementioned camera hates me and all things these days. But yeah, so Sudzers, thank you for existing, for being you, for being awesome. Uh, the weekend is upon us. I hope you guys have a lot of stuff planned uh, that you want to do, not stuff planned that you have to do. You know, I hope you're enjoying the life that you have. That sounded like a Hallmark card. I'm sorry about it, but I do mean it. And for the rest of you that are here, hello, hi, thank you, you exist, thanks for being here. Like, comment, subscribe, all the things that I'm supposed to tell you for the YouTube things, so YouTube will remember me again and put me back in the algorithm. That would be awesome. But I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of Soapy Fun. Bye.